Okay, good afternoon or good morning if you're at UBC. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our session, Researching and Teaching Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Archives. Uh, my name is Eric Hong. I am the Executive Director of the Music of Asian America Research Center and an adjunct lecturer at the University of Maryland. Uh, I am joining you from Nanape Hoking, the unceded land of the Lene Nanape. And you might know uh, this area as Southern New Jersey. Uh, I was supposed to do this presentation with one of my students, uh, Mia Lang Li. Um, she has come down with a serious non-COVID illness uh, this week. Uh, so we talked several times and I apologize. I'm going to read more than I usually do because I'm presenting on things that I wasn't prepared to present on uh, partially. Um, yes, sorry for not forgetting to um, make the live transcription available. Um, this is a part of Virtual Area 2022, as I'm sure you know, and uh, I've been asked uh, to make an announcement. Uh, we had our opening plenary yesterday, during which Aries new bylaws were ratified. This means that we're transitioning from the interim board to a new steering committee, and there are four positions left to, feel, to fill, and nominations remain open until Friday, the 16th of July. So please consider supporting their transition by joining the committee. The nomination information is on the listserv. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, what the steering committee involves, uh, please contact Joanne Evans. So today, um, we're introducing a research project that we started this summer at the University of Maryland. Uh, joining me on this research team are three MIS students, Mia Lang Lee, Sabina Shu Lipton, and Melody Wong. I also want to acknowledge that we received the UMDI School Incremental Research Improvement Grant for the project, and I thank Victoria Van Heining and Diana Marsh for facilitating the application for this award. We are making this presentation today for three key reasons. First, we want to make the point that the paucity of research on AA plus NHPI issues in LIS has real impact. I think this is particularly true for marginalized populations within our diverse communities. Second, we want to encourage you to include more readings and topics involving AA plus NHPI into your archives courses. And third, we want to spark some new research to fill in the many gaps in the literature. So you want, uh, I'm partially doing this uh, as marketing to, uh, to encourage you to join our team. So why did I initiate this project now? Or to put it another way, what did it take for me to recognize the impacts that the paucity of research on AA plus NHPI issues are having? First, as an Asian Canadian, Asian American, I have long been aware of the dearth of research on AA plus NHPI archives. But it was only in the past three years that I became cognizant of the significant impacts that this paucity can have. This recognition began when people started talking to me after conference presentations. Often, these are sharp comments like, it's so nice to hear an Asian American discuss Asian American issues in LIS. Sometimes they are a bit more heartbreaking. After a virtual presentation I did on how the Music of Asian America Research Center switched its focus with the onset of the recent wave of anti-Asian discrimination and violence, a couple of MIS students came up to me and they said they felt that their professors had very little to say about how they're feeling at the moment. And they felt that their professors um, didn't really know how to respond to this moment or the, the hate that this anti-Asian discrimination or violence can have on archives workers in general. A couple of my students also told me that they want more AA and HPI readings uh, in both my courses and my colleagues' courses. On screen, you can see an event organized by the New Jersey branch of Make Us Visible, a national organization dedicated to lobbying states to require AA and HPI history in K-12 curriculum. 
I am using this poster to express my desire to make AA and HPI archives and archivists more visible in LIS. Second, at a recent conference, a speaker, a historian who teaches a course about World War II in the United States, said during the Q&A that he was having trouble finding suitable first-person accounts about the Japanese American incarceration for his students to read. As he said this, my first thought was, how is this possible? There is a digital archive called Densho. You can see a poster that they made here, uh, which is dedicated to remembering those who were incarcerated and studying the continuing, continued relevance of this terrible episode in American and Canadian history. The site includes thousands of hours of oral histories with survivors. The fact that he didn't either did not know of this resource or could not find something suitable there was eyebrow raising. However, what was really distressing was the number of LIS professionals in the room who sympathized with his inability to find a suitable reading for his class. For decades, archivists have been told that archival collections lack diversity. This is undoubtedly true, but we cannot take someone's inability to find resources at face value to mean that they don't actually exist. We, we can't just accept that as fact. Third, I am finally coming to terms with just how rigid disciplinary boundaries are. I am fairly new to LIS. For 18 years, I taught in music departments. And since 2007, I have worked at the intersection of musicology and Asian American studies. As an Asian American studies researcher, I learned about the four people you see on screen. On the left are Karl Matsushita and Tetsudan Kashima. In the late 1960s, they were the founders of what is now the Japanese American National Library. On the right are Fred and Dorothy Cordova the husband-wife team that founded the Filipino-American National Historical Society. These are people known to those who study Asian American history. They and, the collection, they and the collections that they started appear in numerous documentaries and books. Yet, when I searched their names in Library and Information Science Source last week, I don't find anything. There's not a single entry on any of these people. Now that I've outlined the problems I see with the lack of AA plus NHBI research in LIS, I will discuss what we as a team hope to accomplish or at least spark through this project. First, we hope that Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders will feel a greater sense of representational belonging in LIS. When Caswell, C4, and Ramirez introduced this term in 2016, they focused primarily on archival users. Here, we extend this term to archival workers, students, and researchers. Second, we want the new research we initiate to advance archival theory in many ways. One thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately is the lessons that we can draw from the protocols for Native American archival materials. Since SAA endorsed the protocols in 2018, Several archives and special collections are developing dual policies, one for Native American materials and one for non-Native American materials. At the recent AOA meeting, a representative from UC Berkeley talked about the two digitization policies that they are currently developing. We're very uncomfortable with this binary approach, and we think that archives would earn much more interest and trust for many communities if they adopted some lessons from the protocols for other collections. We hope, the new research, the, we hope that the new research that we spark will test this hypothesis and many others to further archival theory. Third, very simply, we want to fill in the many gaps in archival research and to start creating a more complex uh, and complicate, uh, a complex, complete and nuanced history of the field. So what have we done so far? We started talking about the project during the, uh, during the spring semester, and we really started work uh, after the semester in late May. So this is very new, and we started with a literature review. 
We started with library and information science and did keyword searches for Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander. We use singular and plural, hyphenated and unhyphenated. We know the lists that we got were incomplete as we did not search for specific identity, uh, spe specific ethnicities. Articles specifically about Hmong Americans, for example, might not show up. We also did not use older terms like Oriental. So as a result, the earliest Asian American article that we got was from 1970, which was shortly after the term was popularized. We focused on the key topic discussed in the article. The race and ethnicity of the authors did not matter in our analysis. Finally, we recognize that there's general messiness in this search. Some articles might use the phrase Asians in the United States instead of Asian American. In some of these cases, the article won't be located uh, through our searches. Uh, we also caught some articles, but not, our, but not all articles about Asian collections in the US. And we uh, will talk more about that on the next slide. So overall, the searches yielded just over 2,000 articles. So you can see about you know uh, 2,000 and like 50 something, but there are, um, some articles appeared in both searches. So when you got rid of the duplicates, there were just over 2,000. Our team looked through the abstracts and picked out those that focused on AA and HPI and libraries or archives. We left out articles that dealt with DEI issues in general that discuss AA and HPI issues in passing. We made judgment calls on articles about transnational US Asian partnerships, international students, and about Chinese and Japanese collections in the US. We included book lists and media lists, but not reviews of individual or a few books. We're not trying to compile a complete list. We don't feel that is a necessary thing to do. Uh, we just want to get a sense of what is currently out there so that we can begin incorporating articles in our courses and to start research projects that fill gaps. Ultimately, we came up with 237 relevant articles. From the list of 237 relevant entries, we began to classify the types of articles that we found. About half were short news items, book lists or media lists, and reports about activities during APA Heritage Month. We don't think these are likely to be suitable for class readings. Of the remaining half, about 40% are short reports or magazine articles, such as those that appear in Library Journal. Some of these are suitable for syllabi. And the remaining 60%, you know, 50 some article, there are 50 some research articles and case studies that are likely to be suitable uh, for syllabi in some way. We have not read these articles at this point, or I mean, I've read a lot of these articles, but we haven't gone through each article uh, to, to, you know, talk about quality or anything like that at this point. Not surprisingly, most of the articles that we found focused on libraries and not archives. Uh, but I just want to mention one thing about, um, yeah, so it, let, let, me, let me slow down. Um, most of the articles that we found focused on libraries and not archives. And in terms of suitable materials for archives courses, we found only chapter from one book, and that book is uh, Asian American Libraries and Library Services, Activism, Collaborations and Strategies. We found up to 12 articles on Asian American uh, archives, about half of which are about SADA, also not surprising. And we found only up to about five articles that are on uh, Native American and Pacific Islander archives. But looking at the more library oriented articles, um, we did discover something that we did not necessarily expect. We noticed that some of the issues that we're most concerned with today, such as the lack of culturally appropriate materials for Asian Americans in our libraries and the challenges and opportunities of community engagement with Asian American communities, these concerns go back to the 1970s and 1980s. There are articles about these issues in the 1970s, 80s. 
How much things have changed is something that we're going to analyze between now and October when we present on this project at JCLC. So uh, these are our findings so far. And to conclude, um, we would like to discuss our next, uh, our two next steps. To encourage greater incorporation of AA and HBI topics and case studies and archives courses, we are creating a curated reading list. This list will be publicly available this fall, and there will be a crowdsourcing aspect to this list. Um, I will be asking for feedback about how we should do the crowdsourcing uh, aspect. In the current draft, there are 10 categories. Uh, personally, I find long bibliographies to be rather unusable, as I don't know where to start. Uh, some of the members on my team disagree with that, but we will see how that goes. Um, but so our current idea is to list mo no more than five articles or chapters in each category. But we try to maximize the diversity of the articles listed in terms of ethnicity, topic, location discussed, and so on. Additional readings can be listed at the bottom. And the list will be updated every six months. So now I'm going to show you a current draft of the list. Um, and I would love to get your feedback, uh, particularly on this question. Uh, how do you think it can be made as useful as possible? Uh, who should decide what gets on the list? Uh, are the categories correct? Um, are there things that should be combined, added, deleted, and so on? And does anyone have other questions that we haven't thought about? So, um, so here are the 10 categories, archival theory, education, archives and community, archival ethics and management, archival selection, appraisal, acquisition, collection analysis, archival arrangement, description, archival access, reference services, archival activation, exhibits, programming, archival preservation, protection, archival data curation and reuse, and the history of AA and HBR archives and archivists. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm asking if there are comments, thoughts that, that you want to share about this, um, the usefulness of a, of a list like this and if things should be changed in any way. So we have a potential publisher for anyone who um, is interested in, in doing research on this topic. Uh, thank you, Lacey, and we will be in touch. We, we need to get our research done first, but we'll be in touch afterwards. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Um, You can also put it things in the chat or questions. Looks like we have a technical problem here. Uh, okay. So um, is there a platform that people prefer uh, in terms of, sorry, Shirley wrote, in my experience as someone who doesn't have a lot, a strong background in the arts archives are a little intimidating. That is true. Uh, it's intimidating for for a lot of people. Um, can I scroll down? Yes, I can scroll down. I can also um, give you the link 
in the chat. So this is where we are right now. More articles will be added before we make the public. We will be reading everything that, that we put on the list. Uh, we haven't done that yet. Um, uh, but hopefully this will be something that's useful that will lead to, um, lead to more people incorporating uh, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Native Hawaiian articles um, in their courses. Okay. So let me switch back to here. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about a little is that um, we would like to spark some research. So partially this is an advertisement we would love for you if you like to join our team, or if you'd like to start your own research project, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, the idea is to get as many projects uh, out there as possible. So um, let's see. Um, yeah, so let's see if there are questions that um, you are particularly interested in uh, that we have. Uh, these are two questions that I discussed earlier. Who were the pioneers in the documentation of uh, a, a Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander experiences? And what can we learn from the protocols for Native American archival materials for AA and HPI archives? Okay. Uh, these are two questions that uh, we would like to, to work on. Um, but if there are other questions, um, this is the time to brainstorm. And there is a Google Doc um, that I will put in the link. Where does that little thing go? I'm sorry. Picture of it yesterday. And I will also put it up here. Uh, we have one immediate uh, question here. How do we ensure that archives engage ethically and collect materials for marginalized groups within Asian American community? Um, this includes smaller ethnicities, poorer and or lower caste communities, members of LGBTQIA plus communities, et cetera. Okay. Um, I'm also happy to talk out loud if you want, you know, people want to think through ideas or something like that. How to make the story gathering experience feel more reciprocal, especially when academia tends to be so extractive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know if anyone else um, has any ideas right now or want to talk through anything. I'll give you another 30 seconds or so. <clears throat> oh, I think I unmuted myself. I think I could try to talk out uh, something. Okay. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm June, I'm at UBC and in the uh, archival studies program at uh, the School of Information there. So <clears throat> I've been doing uh, research and practice of community archives um, within like the context of the Chinese Canadian context and specifically my community of, of Vancouver's Chinatown. And so, um, yeah, just thinking about like the, the, the you know, wider, the, the big umbrella of like falling under community archives usually, and then Amer uh, Asian American or, or 
Asian American kind of issues as as like niche within it. And so a lot of the a lot of the you know so I um and there's a lot of research in being done in community archives. It's mm-hmm. just lacking the lacking any specific like case studies, for example. Sure. You know, a lot of the case studies are cut. So how do we um because I think the the things that are being shared in the Google Doc right now, um I can share like a white paper that was written last um just last year. Mm-hmm. This could be part of the edit, I guess, part of the readings or whatever, but it was geared towards um UBC learning from UCLA and uh like Michael- Michelle Caswell's work. Sure. Specifically, and and from a cohort there of community archivists that you know spanned uh, you know black and Latino specifically, so it was like okay, where you know where are the Asians being you know part of this workshop and this discussion to be able to um, to to kind of like provide that kind of range and and uh, representation, yeah. So I think that's kind of where I'm trying to insert kind of Chinese Canadian perspectives and and I see it like within conferences, for example, and conference presentations. So um yeah, I don't I, I can certainly share that white paper and uh yeah, where those kind of voices and perspectives come in is is kind of kind of a kind of a puzzle for me, a head scratcher. Okay. Yeah. No, the thank thank you very much for that. And and yes, I mean, how, how we fit in, you know, as, as the racial middle, as some people have started calling it, uh, us uh, and, and Latinos, uh, Latinx people, uh, is, is something that, that we, we have to think a lot about. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts or comments? Okay, thank you so much. Is is this the white paper or something different? What am I looking at here? I think this is something different because I think I've seen the title before. Okay. Oh no, that's the white paper. Okay, yeah. that's the white paper. Okay, mm. thank you so much. Okay. So um I think that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you very much for for joining uh, for joining me. I'm sorry that um, my partner's uh, Mia here is not um, not well enough to be with us today. Um, so I hope uh, you can you know you think about joining our team, and I hope that you will both use more Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific materials, Pacific Islander materials in your courses and in your research. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I know there's no immediate next session, so I am happy to hang around a little bit if anyone wants to talk further. <laughs>